Good evening, guys. Hope the video and audio is perfectly fine. A very warm welcome to each and every one of you to this session, the very first chapter from the unit Plant Physiology, Transport in Plants, lecture number one, Means of Transport is the topic of the day. Yes, my point is live before you with yet another session on Transport in Plants. Hope you all are perfectly ready for today's session. Yes, Bhumi, Yamni, Anandu, Binaya. Welcome, everyone. A warm welcome to each and every one of you. Let's start today's session of transport in plants. As you all know that this topic of transport in plants was deleted from the syllabus for school way syllabus or board examinations of class 11 by CBSE last year. But this year, they haven't given any further update about that. Therefore, we anyway, we are moving it because it is most important for NEET as well. Yes, for NEET as well as boards. Anyway, we will be conveying this session for you. If there is not necessary or if it is not necessary for your board examinations, you may leave it. You may focus it for your NEET entrance examination. If anyone new is watching this session, join our telegram group the direct link is given there in the description box and that is t.me slash need underscore by point if there is any issue with the quality of the video do click the three dots change the video quality to 720 pixels yes so let's move on with today's session do hit the like button share it with your friends and subscribe by point stream the world of bio for the channel updates so let's start today's session plan physiology Chapter number one, transport in plants, the very first topic. Yes. Plants do not have interstitial fluids and circulatory system, but they need to move various substances such as water, minerals, organic nutrients, growth regulators, etc. over long distances. So these all substances must be moved on to various distances by these plants. They do not have blood or certain circulatory fluids to carry these required nutrients, excretory products, all those things from specific parts to the specific other organs or specific structures in a plant. Therefore, what all things that are helping in a plant to transport food, water, minerals, all those things are what we are going to learn in this today's chapter. Yes. So before moving on to that, let me introduce what is plant physiology. Plant physiology refers to various vital activities and metabolism of plants. Various vital activities and metabolism of the plant is referred to as the plant physiology. So guys, anybody new who is known as or who is regarded as the father of plant physiology? Who is regarded as the father of plant physiology? We'll give you five seconds for commenting your answer. Yes. Father of plant physiology. Come on, do it fast. Exactly, and it is Stephen Hales. Stephen Hales is regarded as the father of plant physiology. Do you know, another question is, do anyone know the name of father of Indian plant physiology? Father of Indian plant physiology. Yes. Father of Indian plant physiology is J.C. Bose. J.C. Bose is regarded as the father of Indian plant physiology. So Stephen Hales and J.C. Bose, these are the two scientists who we start with the plant physiology. Yes, all of you know that they grow in plants, grow in soil and absorb water and minerals which are available in the soil. So Let's discuss how this water, minerals and all are absorbed. In what all means are these transport occurring in case of plants? Directions of transport. The very first topic, directions of transport. Transport may be unidirectional or it may be multidirectional. Example, 
transport of water and minerals in the xylem all of you know that water and minerals they are transported to respective body parts from roots to stem or leaves by the xylem right and the food materials are transported with the help of what phloem so transport of water and minerals that is from roots to stem or leaves is known as what unidirectional i mean is an example for unidirectional transport and what is the example for multidirectional transport that is transport of mineral nutrients transfer of, uh, transport of organic compounds synthesized in the leaves yes all those occurs from leaves and it must be conveyed to different parts whether it is to the upper stem or whether it is to the lower roots all those things the leaf from the leaf it must be transported so it is multi directional whether it is upward or whether it is downward all those transports occur am i right this is about the directions of transport so let me say transport is of two basic types transport is of two basic types one is the short distance transport and one is the long distance transport short distances and long distances transport so what is the short distance transport short distance transport refers to the short distance movement of water and minerals then what is this long distance transport long distance transport refers to the long distance movement of water and minerals so movement of water and minerals from tissues just from tissues to other respective tissues this is what is referred as short distance tra transport that is just from a tissue to other tissue of a leaf or from one branch to another branch of a plant all this is referred to as short distance transport are you able to follow guys so that is about short distance transport then what about long distance transport that is from root to stem root to stem leaf root to leaf all these are long distance transports yes bhumi binaya anandu yami thank you so much for your responses so this occurs in the uh what xylem occurs through the xylem and phloem of the plant and this is referred to as this long distance transport is referred to as the translocation very important this is about short distance and long distance transports and now we have to discuss about the further divisions of the short distance transport very first short distance transport it is of five further it occurs in five further types one is diffusion second one is facilitated diffusion diffusion is short distance right sir yes of course we are learning about the five different ways in which the short distance transport occurs and from that the very first thing is the diffusion now after that the second type is the facilitated diffusion we will learn what all these are in detail very detail yes the third one is the active transport third one is the active transport fourth one is osmosis
Fifth one refers to, I mean, fifth one is imbibition. That's all about the five different waves in ways in which the short distance transport occurs, diffusion, facilitated diffusion, active transport, osmosis, and imbibition. Yes. So now let's discuss in detail about the different means of transports. Yes. So these are the three basic topics that we are going to cover today. Diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and active transport. Yes. So let's move with diffusion. What about this diffusion is? It is just the slow movement of gases that is from a region of their higher concentration to that of its lower concentration without using energy. That is what is referred to as diffusion. That is ions must be moved on from the region of their higher concentration they will be moved on to the lower concentration without the help of any energy. Yes. So you can see, they look very concentrate. I mean, look very carefully. It is moving from region of higher concentration to region of lower concentration. That is from a peak to down. Right? From a peak to down. Therefore, we can see the process of diffusion as a downhill process that is it is flowing from a region of higher concentration to that of lower concentration it may be from one part of the cell to other or from cell to cell or over short distances it is not dependent on a living system that is the normal diffusion of substances, the normal uh, what things that we smell. For example, in a kitchen, if the chicken is frying and you are sitting at a long distance and studying, you will be able to smell this uh, what thing that is cooking in the kitchen, right? Yes, exactly in that case of perfumes, in case of incense sticks, all those things, diffusion occurs. That is simply the molecules pass on through the air and we will be able to identify what all things are those. All so those are simple ex examples of diffusion. Yes. Yes, Binaya. And, and today, yes, I forgot to say that today at the end of today's session, there will be Slido quiz, a uh, five question Slido quiz on the topic that we cover today. Yes. Don't forget about that. So let's move on with today's session. It is the only means of gaseous movement in a plant body. That is whether the process of transpiration, whether it is evaporation, all those processes, that is whether a plant is losing their water from their body, gritation, all those processes are diffusion. Yes. So the only gaseous movement in a plant body is diffusion. So hope that's fine till now. Let's move on. So now we have to discuss the factors that affect the rate of diffusion. This will be based on today's two class, right? Only uh, the slider quiz will be based only on the transport in plants. And after that, you will be having a telegram quiz at, I hope it's 930. And that will be based on the two classes that is taught today. Yes. So the factors that affect the diffusion rate is the concentration gradient. That is, it moves from a region of higher concentration to its region of lower concentration. Second point added here is the permeability of the membrane. That is the ability of the membrane to transmit substances. Yes, if the membrane is, if this uh, transport occurs from higher to lower concentration in a semi-permeable membrane, what is that process called? If the say, plasma membrane is semi-permeable, what is that process called? Come on, you come and me. So that is how permeability occurs. So the process of diffusion might, will change to osmosis if the permeability changes. Am I right? Exactly, Bumi. So pressure and temperature is another factor that affect the rate of 
diffusion. Yes. So, for example, in the same case, the chicken frying in the uh, kitchen, and you are sitting at a long distance away or a short distance away. If there is a high rate of wind, or if there is some case out of wind, or if the temperature is high, what happens? You will be able to identify, or the diffusion occurs much faster, and the smell comes to you more faster. Yes, I a very warm good evening. Hope you will be able to follow. Thanks for joining to our channel. Yes, size of the substances is another factor that in the, what affects the rate of diffusion. That is, smaller substances diffuse faster. All of you know that smaller substances diffuse faster, and larger substances will take more time to diffuse. Solubility in, or in lipids of the membrane substances soluble in cell uh, lipids diffuse through membranes faster. If the substances soluble in lipids, if the substances are soluble in lipids, they will be able to move through the membrane much faster. Yes. So that's about the factors affecting diffusion. So let's recap what we have learned so far about diffusion. Yes, we have learned that it is the transport of water and minerals from a region of higher concentration to lower concentration. Yes, no ATP is required. That is no energy is required. Yes, and it is a downhill process. Comment me what is a downhill process? Comment me what is the downhill process. Yes, and next we have discussed that it is a slow process independent of a living membrane or a living system. Osmosis, we can say that it is dependent on a living system. That is a semi-permeable membrane is required. Yes, I higher to lower. So that's about living system, independent of living system. And this photosynthesis, transpiration, all those gaseous moments is the an example for diffusion and it is the only gaseous moment that's about diffusion all about diffusion yes no energy yes no atp i just felt that no energy for me while speaking yes yes binaya bhumi anandu yamni everyone thank you for your responses so let's move on with the second topic, facilitated diffusion. What is the difference between diffusion and facilitated diffusion? You can see here a common term of diffusion. Why such a term is also added? Because such a term is added because the constituents are moving from higher concentration to lower concentration. Samely from higher concentration to lower concentration. Then what is the difference? Then what is the difference in facilitated diffusion? In case of facilitated diffusion, same as that of diffusion, no energy is also needed. Yes. No energy is also needed. Then what is the difference? The difference is that, no Bhumi, the difference is that proteins helps the movement of substances from higher concentration to lower concentration. You can see here a purple or a pink colored area in between this membrane. And that is the transport protein that helps in the transfer of substances from higher concentration to lower concentration. Yes, there are proteins called as porins. Proteins called as porins that helps in the transfer of uh, substances from higher concentration to lower concentration. So it is the diffusion of hydrophilic substances with the help of membrane protein channels and without expenditure of energy. It also needs a concentration gradient. So what is this concentration gradient? Concentration gradient refers to higher uh, concentration to lower concentration. So what is the term as we have discussed for higher concentration to lower concentration? What process is occurring there? There, the process of downhill process is occurring. Downhill process occurs similar to that of diffusion in case of facilitated diffusion. Yes, exactly, Binaya. It is very specific. Cell select substances for uptake. It is sensitive to inhibitors that react with protein side chain. So if there is any substances that is sensitive or reacting with these proteins, 
it will be affecting the rate of facilitated diffusion. Transport rate reaches a maximum when all the protein transported are being used. When this protein is used, completely used for transport, it will affect the rate of transport. Yes. So let's move on with the next slide. Hope that too is fine. So let's discuss about the proteins. So some protein channels are always open and others can be controlled. Example, large size, the porina or porins. These are the proteins that are used in facilitated diffusion. Yes, porins form huge pores in the outer membrane of plastids, mitochondria in case of some bacteria. Molecules having size of small proteins can pass through them. Yes, we have discussed in case of diffusion and uh, facilitated diffusion. Molecules having small size can pass through them. Yes, an extracellular molecule binds to the transport protein. Then it rotates and releases the molecule inside the cell. So this is how it passes on. Yes, this is how it's... Sorry. This is how it's passed on. Yes, from a region of higher concentration to that of lower concentration. So these water channels are made up of eight different types of aquaporins. So how many types of porins are used? Eight different types of proteins are used in case of facilitated trans diffusion. Yes, eight different types. It's a previous year question. There will be eight similar types and eight different types. The answer is eight different types of aquaporins. Yes, do bookmark that too. So let's recap what we have learned about facilitated diffusion. As we have discussed, no energy is required in case of facilitated diffusion. You may contribute your points. You may contribute your points. Yes. Then we have said that what thing is needed? Special proteins are required. Special proteins are required. So what is the name of those proteins? Those proteins are known as what? Porins. Porins, yes, and what happens? Transport saturation or transport rate will be affected if this proteins completely gets used up. And these proteins are highly sensitive to inhibitors, protein inhibitors. That is, if there is any substance that is affecting or that is reactive with these proteins, that also affects the rate of transport. Yes, and they allow only small protein i mean molecules having the size of these small proteins to pass through it yes yes yummy that's all about facilitated diffusion right this is all about facilitated diffusion is this clear till now most of you regard this plant physiology part as a difficult one compared to human physiology but i hope it will be easy for you to understand if I am moving in this way. Yes. So it will be easy for you more than the human physiology. And I guarantee for you that. Is it fine? So let's discuss about passive uniports, simports and antiports. What is this uniports, simports and antiports? We have to discuss that. Yes, Binaya. So the moment of based on this porins, based on this porins, this moment can be classified into three. One is uniport, second one is antiport, third one is symport. So what is this uniport, antiport, and symport? In case of symport, both the molecules cross their membrane in same direction. Right? A molecule alone moves across a membrane through transport or carrier protein. You can see the direction. It is moving in this way. Right? Same direction. Antiport, two molecules move in opposite direction. You can see one is moving this way. And the other one is moving in the opposite way. This is how antiport moment occurs. Then what is symport? 
two molecules together cross the membrane in same direction two molecules together con uh, what move in the same direction and what in case of unipod we have discussed both as same right both move in same direction as we have discussed in case of unipod and sympod then what is their difference the difference is that in case of unipod it is independent of the other molecule that passes along its direction it is independent of the molecule that passes along with it whereas in case of sympod that is required that is dependent on the molecule that passes along with it that is about sympod unipod and antipod is it clear if there is any doubt do ask me right now so that i will be able to clear for you come on come on so with your permission let me move on with active transport yes hope it's fine so let's move on with active transport here yes binaya we are moving just opposite to that what we have learned in diffusion and facilitated diffusion that is the transport occurs against the concentration gradient that is from lower concentration to higher concentration lower to higher we have learned a term that is a downhill process from higher to lower yes so guys do comment me what is the term given from given to lower to higher higher to lower it is downhill transport or downhill process and what is this lower to higher yes the same way opposite to that yes abhi yes binaya the transport from lower to higher is just uphill process or uphill transport okay so uphill process occurs in case of active transport that is it moves from lower to higher by using energy in case of diffusion and facilitated diffusion we said that energy is not used whereas in case of this active transport is uses both the proteins as well as the energy yes it is carried out by membrane proteins pumps are proteins that use energy to transport substances across the cell membrane that is the uphill transport yes transport rate reaches maximum when all protein transporters are being used or saturated as we have discussed in the same way since it uses both proteins and energy in the form of atp when this proteins completely get oxidized or gets utilized what happens the transport rate reaches maximum the carrier protein is also very sensitive and that is it react with protein side chains if there is any inhibitors that react with protein side chains that also affects the rate of active transport yes so let's discuss in detail what we have covered about active transport so far that is it use energy use energy carried out by membrane protein yes transport saturation can occur transport saturation can occur sensitive protein yes requires both atp and proteins both atp and protein is required for transport it is a uphill process that is occurring against concentration gradient yes so this transport may be blocked due to lack of energy if there is no energy what happens this transport may stop because only using energy active transport occurs so if there is no energy what happens active transport stops yes that's all about active transport so let's discuss in detail what all things we have discussed so far yes so property first one is requires membrane proteins simple diffusion requires no membrane proteins whereas facilitated 
and active transport requires the membrane proteins yes sensitivity or selectivity this is highly selective in case of facilitated and active transport where a simple diffusion does not have such a selecting property yes transport saturation no transport saturation in case of simple diffusion because it neither uses proteins nor uses energy whereas facilitated diffusion and active transport they use protein and active transport use both proteins and energy yes uphill transport that is no uphill transport occur in case of simple diffusion no uphill transport in case of facilitated diffusion and uphill transport occurs in case of active transport yes so what is meant by transport saturation yes yamini we have discussed that this facilitated diffusion and active transport uses proteins since that is a common thing we are just taking example of proteins this is also applicable to energy as well yes this protein when a molecule is transported to oh god when a molecule is transported to region of higher to lower what happens in case of facilitated diffusion a protein called porin is acting along that that helps in the transport of a molecule from higher lower region to lower region yes so there will be a specific amount of protein in a particular cell right so what happens in that after specific amount of transport this protein will completely be utilized it will be completely used up and proteins will completely be utilized there will be no further proteins for carrying out this transport so saturation occurs complete saturation occurs there will be no further transports and that is what is referred as transport saturation yes is it fine yamini so requires atp energy is the next property no need in case of simple diffusion and also in case of facilitated diffusion but active transport requires energy very important yes that's all about that's all about that's all about transport in plants means of transport the very first lecture so let's move on with the slide quest hope you all are ready for the slide quest yes so let's discuss about that thanks for your patient listening so let's move on to the quest of what we have learned today so far yes everyone so go to slido.com i don't know if whether any network issues interrupt our quest but anyway we are moving on go to slido.com and use the code biopoints fully small letters go to slido.com and use the code biopoint do it fast do not use any hashtag hashtag is particularly given there in your in your place where you are entering the code itself so type by a point do it fast do it fast so let me activate the quiz for you guys let me activate the quiz for you you all will be able to do it yes activating the quiz so everyone if anyone new is watching this session kindly join the quiz go to slide.com and use the code by a point yes Yes, the first one to join is Yamni. Come on, do join. Do join. Yes, Bumi. All of you should score complete score because each and every question that is included in today's lecture is what I have taught you. Yes, if there is any additional questions, we will discuss it right now itself. Yes. So let's move on with today's quest. Today's quest. Waiting for you guys to join. Waiting for you guys to join. Do it fast. Yes, Binaya, Bumi, Akil. For all of you have joined, come on, do it fast. So let's start today's session with uh, today's quest without wasting much time. 
come on someone else was there in the class as well and then two yes amitav has joined yes so let's move on with the first question of the day moment of materials against concentration gradient is due to active transport passive transport diffusion osmosis i need complete correct answer complete correct answer against concentration gradient that is an uphill process using energy and proteins right hope you all will do it exactly 100% everyone have did it correct active transport is the answer well done my dear students yes so moving on with the second question of the day unipod simpod antipod are the types of unipod simpod antipod are the types of simple diffusion facilitated diffusion osmosis active transport what are they we have said that this is the types of types based on the moment of porins right types based on the moment of porins where these porins are used that's the answer for this question yes that's the answer for this question one have made it wrong as active transport one have made it wrong the answer is facilitated diffusion facilitated diffusion is the case where only porins are used right in active transport the main constant is what it's energy so the porins are used in case of facilitated diffusion and the porins are moved in different ways and that is unipod's important antipod moving on to the third question rate of diffusion is affected by pressure and concentration gradient pressure and temperature concentration gradient membrane permeability all of the above to answer it fast hope you all will do it come on yes your time is up well done my dear students all of you have did it right well done so let's move on to the fourth question water channels are made up of yes we have discussed water channels are made up of eight similar types of aquaporins six similar types of aquaporins six different types of aquaporins eight different types of aquaporins what are the constituent of water channel yes we have discussed that come on your time sub let's check if anyone had made it wrong yes all of you have did it correctly all of you have did it correctly well done well done one question someone made it wrong in case of that simpot antipot and unipot yes all of you should correct your mistakes at each and every particular question the last and final question transport of a long distance me proceeds through vascular system xylem and phloem is called we have discussed right at the beginning the long distance transport is known as long distance transport is known as come on so let me check it whether if anyone have made it wrong or not well done everyone well done all of you have did it correct so let me move on with the leaderboard very first leaderboard of the day yes amitav have got 5 on 5 just in 32 second is the average time that they have used yes second bhumi with 5 on 5 yami with 5 on 5 akil with 5 on 5 vinaya with 5 on 5 then who is the person who got it wrong in case of the other question so this is the leaderboard of the day let me take a screenshot of that i will post in your groups yes so all of you have achieved the first position i am not differentiating it into five position because all of you have scored it five on five because in case of the original need examination there is no difference in case of time only the score uh what the score matters yes 
Anshiga got zero points on five. That is how one got wrong. I don't know how. So let's check it. So that's all for today. Thanks for your patient listening, each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Congratulations, each and every one of you. Thank you for your active uh, what participation. It means signing out from your favorite and my favorite bio points in the world of bio. Bye bye.